Getting rejected from film school really was one of the best things that ever happened to me, even though it was my most devastating defeat at the time that it happened. And in this video, I wanna talk about that story. More importantly, why rejection in the film industry shouldn't set you back because you never know what the film gods have cooking for you. If we wind back the clock, I was in high school, senior year, started applying for colleges. I didn't even really wanna to go to college, but my family kinda <laughs> made sure that was gonna happen. I just wanted to go make movies, but if I was gonna to go to college, obviously I was gonna to go to film school. And I was only looking at the best ones. I looked at USC, I looked at NYU, I looked at UCLA. For one reason or another, none of them were quite right for me. NYU was too expensive, I don't wanna live in New York. USC, too Hollywood. UCLA, I'm not gonna get into UCLA, it's a state school. Their ratios of out-of-state students they took were not great. I ended up settling on Florida State University. They kind of flew under the radar, but they had a great program. They only took 25 kids a year and they really supported them with their resources and gear, which for a non-trust fund applicant like me was going to be very helpful. So I applied and fortunately I got accepted for the interview. So that means I got past the first stage of the applications. So me and my folks drove eight hours from Virginia down to Florida and did the interview. Me and three staff members of the school, I'm so nervous, but I fumbled my way through it and feel like I did okay. And there's a group interview with you and other students. And that part I dominated because that was just like what I did with my friends every weekend. They put us together and had us come up with a story or something. I felt great about it. On the drive home, I was like, I did it. I think I'm going to get in. So I waited. Finally, I get a letter in the mail and it confirms that I did in fact not get in. I was on the wait list. I was like a alternate if somebody dropped out, which almost hurt more. I was like, I was that close that I didn't get in. But if somebody drops out, then I'll be in. Well, nobody dropped out, so I didn't get in. But I'd gotten into Florida State, just not the film school. So I decided I'm just going to go to Florida State and then apply again as a sophomore because they take five transfer students every year. So I said, come hell or high water, I will be one of those five students. So I did everything in my power, studied my ass off. I got straight A's. I networked with film school students. I worked on some film school projects. Finally, the time came towards the end of the year to apply again. I did, I got to the interview, did the group interview and I waited and finally I heard back and all of that work paid off because I had been accepted as an alternate again. I didn't get in, which was like absolutely devastating at the time. I, I was uh, so sad. And I actually went to the dean's office because I was also angry. So I went to the dean's office and I just barged in this crying kid. And I was just literally asking him, like, what could I have done? What else could I have done to get in? And this poor guy, you know, to, to his credit, he actually pulled up my file and tried to give me an answer. Like, well, looks like you're, what you were trying to do didn't really gel with uh, our program and blah, blah, blah. You know, there's really no answer you can give. It's just, we didn't want you. And... So we said no. But anyways, after the heartbreak came anger. And that was very useful for me. I got a huge chip on my shoulder because I knew I wanted to prove that school and that dean and everybody who said that I wasn't good enough for that program wrong. And that motivated me for like uh, about five years, probably. <laughs> I kept the rejection letters. I had them on my wall. That was my hate fire that fueled me. So I had a decision to make. Where am I going to go? What am I going to do now? I completely rudderless. And my friend Chris was already at USC playing football. And obviously, great place to be if you want to be a filmmaker, Los Angeles. So I applied to transfer in. And fortunately, the straight A's that I'd got at Florida State paid off somewhere and they wanted me. So I went and it actually ended up being a lot cheaper than Florida State, which as an out-of-state student was a fortune and USC, even though they're a private school, they gave me a pretty good grant to go there. Still, don't get me wrong, I owe an insane amount of money in student loans, but it was a better deal than it would have been if I'd done four years at Florida State. Anyways, to cut all that short, I get out there and I make the choice to not apply to film school at USC, arguably the best film school in the country. I refused to go through that process again. I was not going to be rejected a third time from film school. But even if they had accepted me at that point, I was just like, film school. They don't want me. I don't want them. I'm going to do it on my own and I'm going to show them that they're useless, <laughs> essentially. Film school's not useless, but that's what I was thinking in my head. I was a little angry. So I studied creative writing, which I figured, well, that's good. It's going to not be film exactly, but storytelling is the most important part of filmmaking. So if I can learn to tell better stories, read literature, learn how to write better, that's going to pay off big time in the long term. 
And you know what? I think it did, but we'll circle back to that. The other benefit of being a creative writing English major is that it's really easy if you want it to be. So every day, me and Chris would watch at least one movie. We would be writing our first feature script every night for hours. And then when summer came around, the first summer after I got to USC, we went out and we made our first feature film, Bad is Bad. And I can tell you, I wouldn't have had the fuel in my belly to make that movie if I hadn't gotten rejected from film school. Not only that, I wouldn't have had the time to make it. I would have been making films for film school at Florida State. I wouldn't have been in school with my closest collaborator and have that freedom to make a big project like that. And that film, Bad is Bad, eventually got a lot of views online. And then we put it up on Amazon many years later, and it got a lot of views there. And it started making us a pretty good amount of money, which we used to fund a bunch more films, like the monthly short films we were doing on the channel. For eight months, we made like eight short films. Those were mostly paid for with money we were making from Amazon and YouTube from Bad is Bad the film that I had made in college because I had gotten rejected from film school. So getting rejected gave me the opportunities to make so many more movies than I would have if I had gotten into film school. And of course, each one of those films was a learning opportunity in and of itself. So my film school kind of continued for many, many years. Conversely, a lot of people that went to film school didn't make that many films after film school, at least not compared to the amount that Chris and I were doing, where we were still educating ourselves. You know, we had to learn by doing. So that's what we did. By doing that, we gave ourselves kind of our filmmaking superpower, which was to be able to make films really quickly and really cheaply. So we didn't have money to do this. We didn't have the resources of film school. So to continue our education, to make that feature, to make the feature that we made right after we graduated college for 12 grand for all the monthly short films that we did, which on average were probably 800 bucks maybe each. So to make these films, we had to learn how to work cheaply and quickly using resources that we already had, like I talked about in last week's video. And that really is the gift that keeps on giving. And I'm very grateful to Florida State Film School for giving me that gift, because I think if you're Working with the resources that your film school gives you, especially if your parents or family are financing your film projects, like your big thesis film, whatever, you're not ever getting forced to learn how to make films cheaply and quickly, which after film school and after your parents cut you off, is going to be a really, really valuable skill unless you immediately start working in the industry, which, you know, good luck. By the way, speaking of having money to make your films, what would you do if you had $100,000 to make your next project? Well, Artlist is giving a hundred K. Well, the sponsor of this video, Artlist, just launched their biggest creator fund ever. They're giving a hundred thousand smackaroos to one creator to bring their vision to life, whatever kind of video film creation it is. So if you have a short film that you've been dying to make, well, why don't you pitch it to Artlist? Just post a video on your socials showcasing your hundred thousand dollar idea. Tag at artlist.io and use the hashtag Artless 100K Fund. The Artless 100K Fund is open for submissions until October 12th, so submit your idea. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in that. But besides all that, Artless.io, great place to get your stock music, stock sound effects. You can even get stock footage, templates, and plugins for your favorite editing software. I use them all the time in my personal edits and these YouTube videos and my short films, etc. If you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I use a lot of Artless.io. So check them out and you'll get two months off any annual plan with the link in my description or scan this QR code here. Thank you, Artlist. But the other gift I got from not going to film school was the gift of a different educational background that I never would have gotten because I was just obsessed with movies. I didn't care about anything else. Many filmmakers are that way, especially when they're young. They started making movies when they were in middle school, whatever, and they just kept doing it and they just got single track focused. I know that there's a lot of us out there that, that happens to, and that's great. It's great to know what you want to do, but I think the problem is if you are that way and you go straight to film school, your educational background is going to be the same as everybody else that has the same passion as you. It is inevitable. Look at a lot of your favorite filmmakers. They didn't go to film school straight off the bat. Maybe they went to a master's program. Maybe they didn't study film at all. Look at Nolan. He studied English. Jason Reitman, he went through the same creative writing program that I did at USC. Spielberg didn't go to film school. The Coen brothers studied philosophy and something else. <laughs> Um, this is fact checker, Kent. I pulled up the Wikipedia. That one studied philosophy. That one went to film school. You can keep going now. Having that varied background, I think, leads you to make more unique films and gives you something 
to pull from when you're creating your stories. And this was so true in my experience. I wasn't a big reader when I went to college. I would get assigned stuff in English class in high school and I would skim through it or do the cliff notes or whatever. I didn't care, but when I went to college and I was studying English, I was forced to start actually cracking open these books and I got really into literature and I got into poetry a little bit. I got into writing and sharing my work with my peers in these writing workshops. And I can tell you definitively that for me, that educational background directly changed what types of films I wanted to make, what types of stories I was attracted to, and inspired a lot of my work. But look, don't take this video the wrong way that I'm saying there's no value in film school. There's a lot of value in film school, especially if you're able to go cheaply or for free with grants and scholarships. You know, student loans are no joke. Take it from me. If you're able to form a network there, ask people who went to USC film school. Look at the interview I did with the editors of the movie Missing who went there. What was their most valuable part of film school? As far as going to film school versus not going, both of us felt like it was less about the classes and what we learned there and more just about knowing people because a lot yeah. of film jobs happen just from people you know and stuff. But I also think that everything we did between you know college and this project allowed us to be ready to be considered for a, a film like this. And many people also benefit from the structure that film school offers. And if you don't have friends to go out and make movies with, well, film school builds that into the whole experience. But the reason I wanted to make this video was not to hate on film schools, but just that the irony really hit me recently. Go on your bed. Go on the bed. Go on the bed. He's a wuss. If you've seen my last couple of videos, you know I spent most of this year working on a short film course called Wrapped in 30 Days that teaches people how to go from a blank page to a fully wrapped short film in a month because I wanted to recreate the educational experience that I had to create for myself, which was just learning by doing. And for me, making a small film and then taking the experience and skills and network that I gained from that small project, and leveling up a little bit to a slightly bigger short film, a slightly bigger film, is what gave me the education and the resources that I have now to be able to go off and make a big film, which I'm hoping to do right after I finish this video, is start working on What's my next big short film project going to be? But I wanted to make this video because for a guy that got rejected from film school twice, I realized, you know, I'm kind of film school now between this channel and the course and everything else. If Oppenheimer was a filmmaker, that'd be me, you know. I am the film film school. But you don't have to pay tens of thousands of dollars a year to learn what I have to teach you. So check out these videos. Check out other channels' videos. Go out and make films. That's the most important part. That's why I put that course together was like, if you buy this course, there's no excuse to not go out there and make a short film right now. Here's everything you need to know to do it from blank page to finishing shooting this thing. That is, to me, the most valuable education you can get. Creating films, learning, doing it again, doing it again, doing it again, getting a little better each time. But if you're watching this video and you got rejected from film school, or if you got rejected from every festival that you submitted to, or if you got rejected from anything else, most of filmmaking is just dealing with rejection and still being able to believe in yourself. If you can do that, you're going to make it in the long run, I think. I had some dark days after I got rejected from film school. I really thought, I'm a loser, I'm a failure, I didn't make the cut. But the film gods work in mysterious ways. And when one uh, film window closes, a film door opens up, but sometimes it takes a long time to see that door. What a horrible metaphor. I did study creative writing, I guarantee it. But uh, didn't write this video out, just freeballing it. Anyways, hope that helps somebody out there. If you get rejected, just use it as fuel for your fire. They can't stop you. Only you can stop you. That's the end of this Tony Robbins seminar.